A virus is really just a hull around genetic material and a few proteins, arguably not even a living thing. It can only make more of itself by entering a living cell. The coronavirus must infect living cells in order to reproduce. Let's have a closer look. Inside the virus, genetic material contains the information to make more copies of itself and doesn't need to enter the host cell nucleus it can directly access parts of the host cell called ribosomes. Ribosomes use genetic information December and that's how these viruses get their name. There are different types of coronaviruses that cause respiratory and sometimes gastrointestinal symptoms. Respiratory disease can range from the common cold to pneumonia, and in most people, the symptoms it initially occurred in a group of people with pneumonia who'd been associated with a seafood and live animal market in the city of Wuhan. The disease has since spread from those who were sick to others, including family members and healthcare staff. There are many cases at present, and the disease has spread within China and also to a number of other countries. So, where did the virus come from? It's known that coronaviruses circulate in a range of animals. Sometimes these viruses can make the jump from animals to humans. This is called a spillover and could be due to a range of factors such as mutations in the virus or increased contact between humans and animals. For example, MERS-CoV is known to be transmitted from camels and SARS-CoV from civet cats. The animal reservoir of the 2019 novel coronavirus is not known yet. How is it transmitted? The exact dynamics of how the virus is transmitted is yet to be determined. In general, respiratory viruses are usually transmitted through droplets created when an infected person coughs or sneezes or through something that has been contaminated with the virus. People most at risk of infection from the novel coronavirus are those in close contact with animals, such as live animal market workers and those who are caring for people infected with the virus, such as family members or healthcare workers. Corona may spread via surfaces, but it's still uncertain how long it can survive on them. Its main way of spreading seems to be droplet infection, when people cough, or if you touch someone who's ill and then your face, say rubbing your eyes or nose. The virus starts its journey here and then hitches a ride as a stowaway deeper into the body. Its destinations are the intestines, the spleen or the lungs, where it can have the most dramatic effect. Even just a few coronaviruses can cause quite a dramatic situation. How does the disease present? Well, from what is known so far, there can be a number of symptoms ranging from mild to severe. There can be fever and respiratory symptoms such as cough and shortness of breath, in more severe cases, there's been pneumonia, kidney failure, and death. The mortality rate is not known yet. With the virus spreading in your body, how can you develop pneumonia symptoms? For this, pneumonia may cause difficulty breathing, chest pain, coughing, fever and chills, confusion, headache, muscle pain, and fatigue. It can also lead to more serious complications. Respiratory failure occurs when your breathing becomes so difficult that you need a machine called a ventilator to help you breathe. These are the machines that save lives and that medical device companies currently ramp up production for. Whether you would develop these symptoms depends on a lot of factors, such as your age and whether you already have an existing condition. How can we tell whether someone is infected? The infection can be diagnosed by a test called PCR, or polymerase chain reaction. This test identifies the virus based on its genetic fingerprint. There's currently no specific medication for the virus, and treatment is supportive care. 
There's currently no vaccine to protect against the virus. Treatment and vaccines are in development. Coronavirus is often compared to the flu, but actually it's much more dangerous. While the exact death rate is hard to pin down during an ongoing pandemic, we know for sure that it's much more contagious and spreads faster than the flu. There are two futures for a pandemic like Corona, fast and slow. Which future we will see depends on how we all react to it in the early days of the outbreak. A fast pandemic will be horrible and cost many lives. A slow pandemic will not be remembered by the history books. The worst case scenario for a fast pandemic begins with a very rapid rate of infection because there are no countermeasures in place to slow it down. Why is this so bad? In a fast pandemic, many people get sick at the same time. If the numbers get too large, healthcare systems become unable to handle it. There aren't enough resources like medical staff or equipment like ventilators left to help everybody. People will die untreated. And as more healthcare workers get sick themselves, the capacity of healthcare systems falls even further. If this becomes the case, then horrible decisions will have to be made about who gets to live and who doesn't. The number of deaths rises significantly in such a scenario. To avoid this, the world, that means all of us, needs to do what it can to turn this into a slow pandemic. A pandemic is slowed down by the right responses, especially in the early phase, so that everyone who gets sick can get treatment and there's no crunch point with overwhelmed hospitals. Since we don't have a vaccine for corona, we have to socially engineer our behavior to act like a social vaccine. This simply means two things. Not getting infected and not infecting others.